Welcome to another episode of Bargain Saturdays. And this week I'm talking about She Creature, the last of the water horror monster movies on this collection I got at Walmart. And quite frankly, I'm not sure what to feel about the movie. On one hand, it has probably the better psychological horror elements for going for itself. And it's probably better at it than probably Blackwater was, considering the mermaid and the female character are psychically linked. So she uses this to send visions of killing her or killing her fiancé. But at the same time, she doesn't seem to use these powers on anyone else, except maybe the captain of the ship, which she seems to seduce more with song and dance than anything else. And why is there no one watching her? I mean, the people that kitten that took her away from the old man that originally captured her, if they read any of the documents about her, would know that she survives by eating human flesh. So one would think you'd be paranoid and keep multiple people watching her at all times, just to make sure she wasn't doing anything. <coughs> Especially when you know she has psychic powers. In fact, even at that point, you think they'd just be smart and get rid of her. But no, they think they're going to make it rich by showing her off in America and giving her and showing her to museums and stuff. But it's this makes even less sense concerning the papers. Let's say that a person that knows a lot about these creatures admits that they only survive in captivity for about three weeks at most. Yet this mermaid in particular survived for over a year and only on two meals. A hint that she's probably the queen of the mermaids. Not that the box doesn't give it away, right? Considering she's pictured right on it in her, in her queen mermaid form, which I've been told looks disturbingly like the queen of the aliens from the Alien series. At least because I was reading some ID, uh, some reviews off of IMDb's or whatever. I think it's that's how it goes. Which I guess you could say jaded my opinion of the movie, considering I know some of the as more negative aspects of it. Then again, I don't know if I really mind the long runtime of 89 minutes. Then again, I could also say that I wasn't paying as much attention to the movie because I was also doing busy work on a video game in order to keep on schedule, hopefully. Or the on um, updating my let's plays, so I wasn't paying as much attention to the movie as I probably should have, in order to be more critical and critical of it and have a better understanding of my own thoughts and feelings on it. Then again, the movie also has so many weird and strange plot points that makes it hard for me to really know what to feel about it. The psychic link is one of those, while strange, isn't exactly an unheard of phenomenon in movies. I guess you could say. On the other hand, having the mermaid be a goddess of fertility sounds somewhat unreal and unnecessary, considering I just don't get the point of it. Besides potentially setting up a sequel, but considering there's not likely to be a sequel, what's the point of setting up for one? And shameful sequel bags are always annoying. Though I guess you could say at least this one's a well-established sequel bag, considering it's from the very beginning of the movie they bring it up. Or at least early on in the movie. I also have to argue. I also have to wonder what feminists would say about the scene where she's having sex with her fiance, since she seems to be being possessed by the mermaid, which is what leads to her being impregnated. So you could argue that she was psychically raped by the mermaid in order to get pregnant, in order to set up a sequel bag that isn't going to happen. So you have a scene that's both hateful towards women, arguably if not definitely hateful, considering it could be taken as a rape scene. Arguably, I'm not sure. I, I mean, there does seem to be some scenes that imply that they were making patty cakes on the boat before during the daytime, so maybe the mermaid just caused her to become more impassioned and lose more control to her or something, so she started choking her fiancé near the end of the scene. But I'm not sure. It's such a strange plot point to have, and it's so confusing, even if you're paying attention to it, you're still probably wondering what's going on exactly. The, the way the effects are working, I'd probably say she's being possessed, but I don't know if she's being possessed to do anything she wouldn't have done normally anyway, outside of the choking bit at the end. It's just such a, like I said, such a strange plot point to have. And and why have it in the movie at all. Never mind the fact that she, the woman supposedly starts forming some sort of lesbian relationship with the Queen of the Mermaids. And how do you get in a relationship, a sexual relationship with a flesh-eating monster? 
who psychically controls and influences your very thoughts and largely uses them to cause you to hallucinate that you're under attack or dying. Uh, even if you want to argue that the mermaid is made helpless under the light, under not the light of the full moon, uh, during the full moon, then I have a full moon. Why on earth would you ever want to be in any sort of relationship with her? She's just too dangerous and could kill you at any time for any reason. And she kills all, she kills your fiance, she killed most of your friends. Exactly how does this relationship work and why would she want to keep it? It just, like, like I said, the movie just shamelessly sequel bags at the end. But at the same time, I'm just not sure what to feel about it. It's just, the, the plot's just so unusual when you start to think about it and break it down that it makes the movie feel needlessly convoluted and almost hateful if it isn't hateful. I mean, it's so, it's so convoluted and confusing, I just don't know how to pin down what this, pin it down or what to even say about it. I will say, though, that the movie contains a lot of nudity, considering the mermaid never wears a top throughout the entire movie, so you're constantly seeing her nipples. And there's a sex scene in which the mermaid arguably possesses the female lead character in order to get her pregnant. A, a scene that sounds strangely misogynistic. Or, uh, I'd argue it probably isn't strangely, it is probably misogynistic. To do, include that scene. I just don't understand what the point of it was, besides a shameful sequel beg. And movies shouldn't shamefully beg for sequels, in my opinion, because more often than not, a movie should be a self-contained story, or at the very least, it should be broken up into books that are comprised of many chapters, and shouldn't feel like they're shamefully asking for a sequel that wasn't really needed or warranted. And there's really no reason to have a need for a sequel, I mean, the she-creature kills everyone but except that one woman at the end of the movie, and there's no reason for her not to kill and eat her, too. Uh, outside of the whole baby psychic link thing. And that's such a strange, odd plot point that it just doesn't really add, make sense to have it. The movie might have just been better off if she was killed at the end of the movie. I guess you could argue that showing the her daughter having possibly the powers of the mermaid was meant to be scary, because it implies that the child isn't normal, and that that's the reason why she's continued to meet with the Queen of the Mermaids, and is still alive after doing so. Though what she's been doing for the Queen of the Mermaids to justify not eating her, I don't know. Maybe she's been luring other crews into the Forbidden Islands for her, which would be one of the strange, dumbest things she could ever do, in my opinion. It's just, it's just, I just don't get the movie. I wanted to be a cheesy B movie, and instead it feels like a pointlessly, needlessly hateful movie in some respects. Uh, I probably should stop flashing myself in the face with the box, but I just don't know overall what to feel about the movie. Maybe that's why there's so many mixed reviews. It has good elements in some places, but other elements are just feel pointless or unnecessarily hateful for no good reason. And there's some plot points that are brought up that are dropped almost instantly because they're almost instantly solved, which makes you wonder why bring them up. I guess you already there used to add to the psychological horror element somewhat, but they it's not like you really need to go the route they did to do that. The whole she can read my mind thing was scary enough, wasn't it? be honest, I'd probably say stay away from a she-creature. Unless you're looking for a bad horror movie, maybe. It might be worth picking up, but this probably has so many strange, weird plot points. That's just not worth looking into. I mean, I don't, I don't even think I even discussed the whole they went, the mermaids used to be sirens. Yes, they're the Greek sirens, and somehow they mutate into mermaids. Or their whole implication that the Queen of the Mermaids is a goss for Tilly. I may have brought that one up, but it's it's just such a strange, unneeded plot point. I mean, you just have a, a, a mostly fish-based creature that's, I guess, half fish, half human, that eats people. Why only eats people, I don't know. One would think that a mermaid would be less picky and would eat just about anything, fish or whatever have you, instead of relying entirely on eating people. 
Especially since the only mermaid with any real special powers or abilities is the Queen of the Mermaids. So it seems like she's the only one that arguably might have the ability to entrance people with her songs and dance. Which makes it very ineffective, considering that most boats probably aren't going to go close to the Forbidden Islands anyway. Considering they seem to be somewhere between America and England. Somewhere. And the Greek sirens lived in the Mediterranean Sea, so why would they move out to the open ocean? I just don't get these plot points. I mean, they're not plot points, they're background information, but it just seems like a mess of background information. Like I said, if you're looking for a bad horror movie, this might be something to look into, assuming you're not going to be overly offended by the whole, probably it was a rape scene. And all the nudity and the lack of real gore or anything on screen. Considering some people do like a gore fest. I don't, but this movie doesn't really have one. In fact, I think the most we see is some blood spurting at most. There's just not a lot there, really. It's I guess you could argue it's just not that good of a horror movie. When you break its elements down. And that's a shame, because I guess you could have had a good idea here with this whole psychic link thing. If the mermaid actually used the, her powers to psychically attack most of the crew members to drive them into paranoia, so they start fighting with themselves, and then she can start picking them off. And they'll think other people on the boat were responsible for it, especially if she leaves some sort of framing evidence behind. And, like, maybe she could steal a knife from somewhere and cut flesh off of a body or something and then use a knife from all the other crew members and continue to push paranoia more and more so they start fighting and killing each other and she can just go around swooping up bodies later or something or if they get pushed over where she can just swim after them and eat them later it's it's just like, like I said there, there's elements here that would have been interesting but, but only in a really much better movie <sighs> So I'll, I guess I'd probably say it, say like I said, avoid it unless you're looking for a bad horror movie, and only then if you can um, ignore the whole nudity and stuff. <sighs> Until next week, hopefully this next time we'll be dealing with a more family friendly movie, or at least a movie that isn't as um strange and hard to figure out what I sh actually want to think about it. I'm sorry, I tried um doing this episode like four times in this weird rant ramble way, and I still couldn't decide how, I wasn't happy with it. Uh, hope, hopefully I'll have an actual script written up for next week's movie when I figure out what that movie's going to be. I'll probably watch it um, tomorrow or Monday, depending on how things go. We'll find out, though, won't we? If anyone actually watches this.